Hi, I'm Patty. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this really cute summer sign and I'm going to show you a bunch of really neat tricks to get it done quick and without a mess. I, I love painting 3D signs because so much of the work is done for you and it makes painting a snap. So what we're going to do is we have 3D sign and we have the stencil set. So it's like a deluxe set and you've got different pieces for all your different parts. I love the dimension of a 3D sign. So we have all of our letters and then we have etched lines. So they're very lightly etched. So when you base cut over them, they will um, still show through so you can glue your letters down and not have to measure and futz and worry about things getting crooked. Okay, so I'm gonna take all my pieces off. Today, what I'm gonna do is show you an alternate because I'm gonna do mine slightly different than how things are laid out. So what I'm going to do is instead of using my etched lines, I'm going to flip it over. I'm gonna paint on the back side of my board. So you can use it on this side and use your etching lines. Now these are, you can't even like hear my fingernail catching on these. So they are so lightly etched, but they still do show through your paint. So I'm going to flip it over and we're going to start with our base coats. We're going to use number 17. Um, if you don't know, we have a color chart that is all of the colors that we use. I think there's approximately 80 um, and it we have them numbered with our numbers. And then it has the deco art number and then the Sherwin-Williams number. And I'm going to grab something real quick. At Sherwin-Williams, you can get these little to-go sample um, containers for the paints that you use a lot of. Um, if I was going to say which ones to get, black, white, cream, uh, number 18, some of those colors, whatever you paint with a lot, this is very much more affordable. And it also has the DecoArt color. DecoArt has 250, 300 colors of paint, so they have a wide variety, and they're probably things that you already have in your paint stash. And so we have that conversion number on here as well. So you can do it either way or mix and match. Okay, so number 17 is our base color for the circle. We're gonna use our foam brush. And then when I'm painting on these raised pieces, this is some of the most important stuff that you're gonna learn in this video, is how to manage painting on raised pieces of wood and not make a mess. Okay, so we're going to sweep I'm going to pull towards me and lift up as I'm applying the paint. It's a really quick motion, but if I slow it down, it's more of this kind of thing. And then as I move to the other side, I'll turn it around. It's really important for you to get your base brown on first because we're going to be painting a white band on this. And if your paint isn't dry and you tape or you do any of that messing around, you could end up lifting your paint and then you have to do patching. And when we're talking about the techniques to keep the edges of your lettering clean, the one thing you don't ever want to do and ask me how I know because I've done it. Um, you don't want to have to clean up around a bunch of little edges. So what I'm going to show you is going to be super important for you to know for any project that you're doing on anything raised coming up in your future. We're going to mix number 61 with number 27. So that's white and this really pretty fuchsia color. I'm going to mix enough so that I can do my letters and my watermelon. Now I put down two almost equal amounts. Ooh, keep out of my brown. And I'm just going to mix it until I like the shade. So I'll keep pulling pink in until I like the color of the white. And I think it's going to take it all. Probably mix just a little bit too much of that. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna do another coat. So I'm gonna keep this wet in a full top baggie so that I don't have to wash another brush. 
because I'm just going to use this in just a few minutes when this dries. Now we're going to go with the um, Jumbo Dauber to do our letters. We're going to do S, M, and E in our pink, and we're going to just blot off our excess paint, and then just very lightly, we're going to do two coats, but the paint's going to dry fast. Very lightly, just tap that on. And that is one of the ways that you're going to keep your letters clean. If you get some on your fingers, dry your fingers off because it's easy to transfer that paint onto your letters. If you do super heavy pressure, it's going to make a mess around the edges. So light touch. So now that my pink is dry, we'll get the next coat going. These Jumbo Daubers and the Ink Sweepers as well do such a phenomenal job of painting these raised 3D signs. I'm using number 81 with white, which is number 27. And we'll go ahead and base our little water droplets. If you don't want to get paint on your fingers, you can do one side of the droplets and let it dry and then go do the other side. Make sure you know which way is up. If you take these all off and you mix them up and stuff, you want to make sure that you know which way everything lays. So um, keep them straight right when you pull them off your board. When you receive these letters, these are super sensitive as far as like, you wanna be careful, they're fragile. Um, when you receive these, they're gonna be all like um, plastic down to your board. So make sure when you take them off that you treat them kindly. Um, maybe have a flat box or something that you can put them in or on while you're busy painting the other things. Um, just know that you need to be careful with them. Um, the letters are super sturdy, but these long spindly things, you wanna take care not to break anything. Um, if you do break them, you can piece them back together and glue them down so that they match and you will not be able to tell. So they're super easy to patch and to do that thing. So that's good. All right, now we got the layout steps to do and I'm gonna show you some tricks that I know how to do so that you can do this easily. Okay, so because we're not using our marks on the other side, I have to do a layout with this project. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this away. I'm gonna grab a tool. This is our circle marking stencil. Got our ghost writer, and I'm gonna make that the white ceramic lead. The neat thing about this is this is marked so that it does a whole bunch of sizes of circles. And so this is a 15 inch circle and I can match it up to its etched line. And now what I wanna do is go find my dots, my um, cut marks right there. And I think actually, let's see, I think it's not quite even. So I'm gonna flip that around just a little bit. So these lines that go, these dots that go across this way are lines to line up with. So I'm imagining that as a line and I'm looking for where that is in distance to my line. And now I've got a perfectly marked um, uh, layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this across. I'm just gonna mark it. This is the middle lines. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a couple of up and down marks as well. So I'm gonna pull this off and now I have straight up and down lines. Um, and then this is where I will know that my slice of watermelon is straight, but I need to make a white band. And so that's what we're gonna do next. So um, I'm going to place my letters here and know that I'm going to need a band that's bigger than that. Go with our T-square. So this is how you can make this project your own. I'm going to line my T-square up with my lines. 
look at my lettering. I'll bring him over here. I think we'll go two and a half. It doesn't need to be super big. So I'm going to give myself three lines. And then we look for something straight. Well, when you have stencils, you have a laser cut straight edge and a corner edge actually as well. So when we do our when we do our laser cutting, they're always done on a grid. They're always done straight, so you will always have straight edges if you need them. So I'll lay this across my three lines and give myself a band. And then because our paint is fresh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a stencil of sorts. Now this is gonna take some hanging on, so we're gonna to wanna to be a little bit cautious. And we'll get out a jumbo dauber and some white paint. I'm gonna take this one away. I'm gonna hang onto this guy and keep him nice and still. I think I'm actually gonna tacky tape him. We're gonna stencil his edge. Bring it down below. I like to blend while the paint is still wet. I think it turns out nicer. And really we only have to use the dauber to do the edges. And then we'll switch to a foam brush. Okay, we'll take that one away. Get this guy down here. I'm going to end up putting that other one back on. Now this one kind of doesn't matter at all because it's going to fade below the watermelon slice. But um, I think just to keep it straight, we're just going to make it straight. I think it's time to switch to the foam brush and we're going to put that thing right back on. Okay, we are getting some place. Let's get some seeds on our watermelon. So we'll take our watermelon stencil. Choosing not to do anything with this rind piece. And we'll use one more dauber. It's like the dauber um, project. You cannot use the daubers wet. So make sure that you have enough to have, you know, three or four of them so that you can do whatever projects you want to use them for. You could use a stencil brush for this. It goes way faster with the dauber. Right tool, right place, right? All right, we're based and ready to assemble. This is the fun part. We are going to put our pink watermelon slice on here. Make sure that we're kind of even. Don't want to throw anything crooked. Do a dry run before you put your letters all in one place. Um, so make sure we know that our M's go together. And make sure we have them in the right order. So we have our line right here. That's what I put that there for. And then you can see how you like them. Make sure that you're straight. And once you get them where you like them, then you can start gluing them down. I'm going to show you two perfect glues in just a minute to glue your letters down with. And we put our hello up here. Make sure we're not going through our holes. And then we're going to put all of our little water droplets there. And then we have our watermelon rind. Such a bright and cheerful color palette. Okay, so this is about where everything's going to go, minus the little water droplets.
Okay, we have two favorite glues that we like to use, B6000 and this quick and dry tacky glue. And I think I'm gonna go with the tacky glue today. Um, I love that this nozzle is upside down. I store it in my drawer with my mediums um, so that everything is pointing down to the tip. We're going to start, I think, with our summer letters. Let's see if we like all of our placement. I think I'm gonna put my two M's on first because they are pivotal. You want your glue to go right up the middle. And the, they can kind of swim around just a little bit. One thing to know, if you put something down and you don't like it, you move it, remove it immediately. If you put something down and you jockey it around, it will move and then you will see it later and you'll be sad. So be careful, work methodically. So I'm working from the middle to the outside edge and that is gonna make it so that I can not run into my middle letters, okay? So work from one end to the other, whichever way that works for you. Okay, so next, and then I'm just going to start gluing all of these down. When I'm gluing the longer letters, I'm going to concentrate on the thickest areas and give myself some glue there and then just a little bit out to this outer edge and really light touch. So I don't want a bunch seeping under. All right. Okay, next we'll put glue all over. And cinch it up. it down. And then we'll glue on the back of our And press it down. Ta-da! Okay, so now we've got some finishing pieces to talk about. So you're gonna let everything dry completely. If you've got any marks, you can erase them with your eraser or with your click eraser, which is a wonderful tool. Um, be sure you check out some of our other videos to see how you use all these amazing tools and how to wash your stencils and all of that. We'll put links and stuff um, to other videos. but. In the meantime, you let it all dry, take it outside, follow the directions on the can. You always use safety when you're using chemical sprays and things like that. This is Krylon Matte Finish, and it is number 1311, and it is a magic, amazing spray finish. I've used it for 30 years plus, and so you'll take it outside and you'll just give this a nice couple of coats going in both directions, um, let it dry in between, and then that will be how you're gonna protect your um, your art. Can you believe how cute this is? I love it. So make sure if you like this content that you subscribe, ring the bell, you'll be notified when we have fresh, wonderful, cute things to paint in the future.